This is a supplementary lecture to the Executive Black Belt, uh, Executive Green Belt class, and we are going to be covering we are going to be covering hypothesis testing in this uh, in this lecture. This lecture covers uh, slides 109 through about 143 in your text. So what I want to do in this in this lecture is give you a little bit of a background of hypothesis testing, um, organize it a little bit, an organ organization. And then we will simply do examples, and that's it. And the examples will be from files that you have in the book. We'll be doing them both. Each example we'll be trying to do in a mini tab. So you have that, and also in Excel statistics. So you'll be able to find out, uh, oops, statistics, see if I can spell. <laughs> there we go. All right, in Excel statistics also. So you'll get both sides of it. You'll get to see it twice, and um, you'll get to see what are the key takeaways. Okay? Also, I want to point out that hypothesis testing always goes along with another technique called confidence intervals, and so we'll get both uh, at once. It's kind of like the old certs commercials uh, where you get two mints in one. Okay. Uh, we're, hypothesis testing is a pretty broad subject, but here are the, here are the cases that we're going to cover. We're going to cover testing of means. We're going to cover testing of variances, but I'm going to make that a little bit uh, a little bit more specific, and we'll just say standard deviations. We'll convert it to that. Uh, we're going to talk about proportions. And remember, a proportion is just sort of the pure form of a percent, right? When we say 25%, that just means the proportion is 0.25, okay? Proportion is always sort of pure of any sort of multiplicative factor. Um, but that's really what we're talking about. And uh, finally, we will talk, we'll round it up with a very brief discussion of testing medians, uh, and we'll do that. So. In, um, just to give you, here's the symbol that we'll be using for each of them. Here's the test uh, or tests that we'll use. So the symbol that we use for testing means we'll be, be comparing, say, mean mu with mean two with with, ugh, with mean two, which would be mu one and mu two. So that's what we're testing. We're going to look at the um, at t tests. Okay, we'll look at one sample and also two sample. We'll look at both of them. Uh, we'll be testing standard deviations. Those are sigmas. Okay, and we'll be looking at something called the F-test. We'll also be looking at something called Levine's test. Okay, and we'll tell you what distinction, the distinctions of why would you use one over the other. Um, which is a little more complex, perhaps, than one and two sample two. Uh, when we talk about proportions, we'll be talking about the pies. Okay, and here we'll, this is a very simple one, we'll be talking about a two proportion test. And uh, for medians, we're talking about news. And um, there's lots of different tests for medians. They basically all work more or less the same. We're going to be looking at Kruskal, Wallace, and uh, I don't know if they all have two associated with them. Many, many means, uh, median testing uh, tests actually have two names. In Excel stats, we'll look at the Mann-Whitney test. Okay, so those are the ones that we're going to be looking at, and let's go to it. By far, I think I said this before, the most important ones, the ones that you want to star, are, are the first three, particularly the first one, and sort of like the decreasing stars are kind of telling you sort of how useful these things are. By far, the, most one, the one that you're going to be most interested in is uh, the test of means. Those are t-tests. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do uh, a couple of examples in there. 
So let's get to it. The first um, example um, that we'll do is um, one that is, uh, oh yes, well, what we'll want to also do is keep in mind before I go into this, the setting that's most common is going to be when we have a Y that's a num, let's put it this way, num, and a X that's a cat, right? Where this one right now is only going to have two categories. So for example, we might have dr uh, driver gas mileage by gender. Gender only has two categories, male, female, um, so that would work for this section. When we want to do more than two categories, like, uh, like say, eye color, you maybe want to uh, uh, measure, if you're an optometrist, maybe pupil dilation from a certain type of chemical solution, uh, and you want to measure that by eye color, you could have blue, green, hazel, brown, uh, more than more than two categories, that'll be something called ANOVA. All right, but to start out, this is what we're going to come out with. If we have a Y that's a number and X that's two categories, first we'll talk about means. Okay, that's a case where we'll want to do a t-test. Okay, and we'll talk about uh, the t-tests are for means. But also with this type of uh, X and Y situation, num cat, uh, we'll also be talking about uh, variances, and that's the F test and Levine's test. And again, we'll tell you what the distinction is there. So those are the first ones that we're going to cover. We'll cover means first. So let's get to it. Let's uh, let's take the uh, the first example, which is not quite a Y and an X. It's just going to be one Y. Um, but you'll see, I think, the relation here. And in this case, we're we're looking. We're going to be doing a file called. Uh, this is the example on page 118 uh, in your book, and uh, we'll be using the the file driver speed. So in this example, what we're doing is maybe a benchmarking study, and you can imagine that you work for the for the state police or something like that, and you wanted to clock a bunch of people who are driving on Route I-95 and calculate their speed. So uh, we looked at the driver speed and the question that might arise is let's compare the speeds that we're clocking to the speed to, to some speed that um, would be some sort of standard, say 55 miles an hour. Uh, let's suppose it was a, a stretch of highway that was heavily populated. So what we want to calculate is driver speed. I'll call it DS. That's definitely a num. And we'll use a t-test to compare whether or not the driver speeds, on average, are uh, above or below 55. Uh, but we'll do it in a way that will say whether we that will determine whether it's statistically significant or not. That remember that's what hypothesis testing is about. So if we were doing our PGA wheel, remember the old PGA wheel. The first question would be. Uh, I wonder if average speeds are above 55. Let's make a plot of it first, and then let's run a test. Okay, we're going to be most interested in this, but just for just for grins, let's go ahead and do the whole nine yards, and we'll do it in um, we'll do it in Excel stats. So in this case, we've got one num, right? We only have one num, so let's go ahead and do that in Excel stats, and we'll get the test along for the ride. Then I'll show you how to do it in test. Okay, in Excel stats, the first thing that we need to do is get the data file open, which I've got right here, driver seat. There it is. Select it. One num. Okay, so the first thing that we ought to maybe look at is some sort of comparison to see whether we think it's above, the, on average, above or below 55. A nice way to do that, or an easy way to do that, is to look at the histogram. And remember, I like to give a little bit of room on each side. So we'll go between, say, 45 and 85, maybe 40 and 85. And we'll put a few more classes in there. So if we look at this, just taking a look at the histogram, and the histogram isn't the only tool, but look at all, if we, if we look at, I'm going to try and highlight or color, <laughs> color these. Look at all these boxes, all of this are drivers that were above 55. 
boy, it sure looks like there's more drivers that are more 55 than less. And in fact, if we look at the average speed in our data set, it's 64, which is clearly above 55. The question is, do we have enough statistical evidence to conclude that it really is greater than 55? And if we went out on a different and got a different sample, that it would be below. Let's check it out. For that, that's a hypothesis test. So we're going to write it out. Um, we're going to write out the hypothesis test. So let's go ahead and write that. All right, so let's write out our null. Our null is always going to be there. I don't see any evidence for what I want to make. So the first one would be uh, maybe mu is, uh, is that the actual mean is less than 55. Oops, is, is let me just say, is equal to 55. Let's just try that. Is equal to 55. So mu is equal to 55 versus, in this case, our alternative, we really want to see that it, we want to really want to test that if it's greater than 55, right? So it sure looks like, and that's what our graph said, sure looks like that's the case, looks it. Like I said, there's other graphs that we'll be able to use to tell that as well. So that's what we want to test, okay? And remember, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running this test um, and then we'll look at the p-value. So let's see how we do that in Excel stats. It's actually quite straightforward. All right, so here we are in Excel stats. The quick way to do it is to actually go and look at the mean plot and to see if that overlaps 55 when we put in the 95% confidence interval. It doesn't. That's one tip off that we're going to get a significant p-value. But let's do it for real. Let's run the test. The test is found on the tab tests. Okay, it really is almost, it's all basically done for you once you get the data in there. You just have to know where to look. And here it is right here. Now the one thing that we do need to do is we need to make sure that we uh, test the right mean. So we'll put in 55 there. And then I get the right alternative. So I'm not looking at whether it's less than 55. I'm looking at whether it's greater than 55. And that should be a 55 there. Whoops, let's see. Let me go a little bit higher just to make sure that we've got it right. I'm going to shut this down actually because I think I did get it a little bit wrong. I, I do this once in a while where uh, I, I hit the wrong, I go to the wrong place. There it is right there. That's what we want to test. We want to test the mean of whether it's 55 versus uh, it's not 55. See, I typed in the wrong thing first uh, last time. I've got my data in there. And remember, we've got to click the right one, and there it is, a p-value that's very low, right? It's point, it's point, it's 1.1, 1 .1, but there's five zeros in front of that 1.1, 1 .1. okay? So that's important, and, and so that that's going to lead us to say we reject the null because p is low. Remember the phrase, if p is low, the null must go. And, but also, we can also see that the confidence interval does not overlap 55. In fact, it's all above that. So all of that, all of those roads kind of lead to Rome. It's in fact 60 to 68. So we'll take a look at, kind of draw that up. We certainly have a p-value equals 0 0.000011 which is certainly less than 0.05, which means reject the null, reject H0. And that also means, remember when we looked at the confidence interval, the true average was somewhere between 60 and 68. And if we pop, put the point for 55, we notice that it's outside of that interval. And if it's outside of that interval, that means that that would be a bad estimate to estimate that it's 55. That's another indication, indication that this is significant. So we will reject the null and make a conclusion that indeed people are driving above 55 on average in this, on this particular straight of, a stretch of road. Now the question is now let's convert it back to real language, practical language. What does this mean? Well, if you're the police department, maybe you put up some extra radar guns, maybe you ignore it, maybe you 
find out if it's at other times, etc. Okay, but there's some action, and now it's justified because you found that statistically that's true. So that's an example of the one sample mean. Let me show you how to do that in Minitab. It's a little bit different in Minitab. Okay, so in Minitab, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the data into Minitab from Excel. There it is. Okay. We can do the graphs as well, but let's go and do the statistics or the t-test. This is a one sample t. Now notice you didn't need to know that in Excel stats. You didn't need to know it was a one sample t. You just did the means test. In many tab you need to know it's a one sample t. So we have one sample, so we're going to be doing the one sample t, testing means here. We have samples in the column, so I will select the speed. And I want to perform the hypothesis test. My hypothesized mean is 55. I can ask Minitab to make a box plot if I want. I like that box plot. You'll see that this is kind of a, it's not the most earth-shattering thing, but it's an interesting plot. Let's go to the options. Now, here's where we can actually, in Minitab, we can add, we can change the alternatives. In this case, we want the alternative greater than. We want to test to see whether my uh, it's equal to 55 versus it's greater than 55. You know, if we left it at not equal, that would have been just fine. We could have used the confidence interval to tell us where to find this. It turns out, though, that your, your test is just a little bit more powerful if you know where to look. So no harm, no foul if you just used it as a not equal. Let's let it rip. And when we let it rip, uh, we see, indeed, there's our 55. There's our confidence interval. You see that? Actually, it's just a confidence bound, but it's uh, that's how we do it in, in, uh, if we only have one sided. It's called the confidence bound. And there you see, there's our estimate. It says that it's you know a little bit greater than, say, 62. And there's our 55. So clearly, this is going to reject that null. And let's check it out. Yep, there it is. Look, the p-value, Minitab doesn't give you as many zeros. It just says, nope, it's equal to zero if it's less than, say, uh, 1 in 10,000. Um, but there you go. Okay, so again, Minitab gives a 95% bound as opposed to the p-value. Now, um, just to give you an idea, I'm going to use a control. If you use control E in Minitab, you can get back to where you were. Let's put in, instead of the greater than, let's just put in the not equal and see what the difference is. The only real difference is it, it, it now has an interval. You see it starts and it ends, whereas before it just gave you a bound. But we'll see that the price that we pay for that is that we moved a little bit to the left. And there it is right there. See, we went from like 61 to 60. We lost a little power in that test. But certainly this test was powerful enough to make that decision above 55. Most people find this to be more easily interpretable, that confidence interval rather than confidence bound. Okay. And that's always that's also reflected here. Notice it's giving the same answer. See that? That's the same answer. Okay. So let's do another example here. Let's move on to the example that's given in one, on 122 in your text. And I'm going to shut down Excel statistics or uh, the driver speed. And let's do the example. I'll shut down some of this stuff in two. One of the things that you have to always look out for is that there's lots of things that end up getting open and all that. So I advise you when you make conclusions from things, to pop them into a PowerPoint or pop them into some logbook that you have when you make certain conclusions from analysis. Um, for this example, uh, we are going to be looking at, this is now a two sample T, and the, the difference is, you'll see in just a moment, is when you draw the box, you'll have something on the left-hand side, and it'll force you to make a comparison between some data and uh, 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 another group of a different data as opposed to last time where we made comparison of data, of the mean of data, to a number, right, 55 miles per hour. It's a little bit different. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at, I can put this up, sorry. We're going to look at backlogs before and after. There we 
where we are over there. Okay. So let's look at backlogs before and after. And here what we've got is we've got a, uh, and let me just do it right here in the, let's just do this whole thing right here in the file. Uh, we have got a, uh, let me draw the box here. We're looking at backlogs. Could be anything, right? But but in this case, it was backlogs in a uh, in a in, in for a healthcare company in terms of their paying claims, and that's a bad thing, right? So we'd like those backlogs to go down. And it was a count. You can see it's a number. That's a numerical variable. And what they wanted to look at was before and after they made a process change. Okay, so that's a cat, right, before versus after. So we've got a cat here and a number here. All right, we draw our PGA wheel, and you'll see it's one num, one cat. First thing we ought to do, this, this is, I wonder if our change has worked. So the first thing we do is make a graph, then maybe do some analysis, then maybe make a conclusion. Okay, let's make a graph first. Uh, if we're in Excel statistics, in Excel statistics, we're talking about one num, one cat. So let's get that done. I'm going to show you how to do this. And um, in this case, I'm going to use the uh, box plot. And we're going to show you how to read the box plot. OK, well, this is pretty good. You can see this pretty well. Whoops, now we can't. There we go. Okay. So for to see if the means are different um, for a box plot, here's a box plot. And I'm, uh, just, to, just to give you an idea, um, with a box plot on the left-hand side here is our output, and this will be our time period, right, before versus after. So that's partly how you read a box plot. What we're going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for the difference between that between where the hovering is of the two boxes. If one box is sort of hovering above another, we might ask the question, hmm, I wonder if the means are different. Okay, so that's how we that's how we look at a box plot. If they hover at about the same area, if the boxes are more or less aligned, their centers are more or less aligned, we're probably not going to ask that question all that deeply. Okay? I do what I call the UFO test. I pretend that these are UFOs. And if one is sort of hovering above the ground, in other words, just taking off, and the other is still stuck on the ground or something like that, I might say, aha, I think that there's a difference in these UFOs. I think there's a difference in means. For that, we'll do a two-sample T. Let's go ahead and do that now in, um, let's go ahead and do that now. Let me mic it in. It looks like the means look. different from the box plot. Okay, so let's check it out. Let's see if it's true. We're going to do a two sample T. Get rid of some of this stuff. There we go. So select this. Excel statistics, one num, one cat. We already had it, I guess. I didn't have to do it again. And we'll go to tests of two categories. You'll see later we'll be able to go to test of n categories. But let's just do test of two categories. In this case, we just want to see whether they're different. So let's leave it at that. There's my hypothesis test. You see there it is right there, two sample t tests. And uh, before versus after. And we've already got the not equal alternative. And again, look at this p-value. Very, very small. 2.99 times 10 to the minus 25. In this case, there's 25 zeros in front of that. That's pretty small. You can see the confidence interval does not overlap zero. Um, so no, and it's not even close. So no way does it uh, is this going to. Uh, this is absolutely statistically significant. So let's write out the whole thing, which I neg neglected to write out the test. But let's write it. Okay, our H0 would have been mu before is equal to mu after. 
versus H A mu before is not equal to mu after. Okay, we got a p-value was certainly, absolutely, 100% less than 0 0.05, much less, right? Which means that we reject the null in favor of the alternative. They're definitely different. Okay, they're definitely different. If you want to know sort of how much it improved or how much it changed, the confidence interval, and when we looked at the confidence interval, we found that that confidence interval was 34 to 41. So that would be our estimate for how much it changed. Okay, point estimate of 37.7, but a plus or minus amount such that you get an interval of 34 to 41. Okay, let's do one more because this is so, 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 so key. Um, and um, let's do one more. Let's do software usage. Now, this one is not in the book, but is, I think you'll see it right away. I think you'll see the value of this. And incidentally, we're going to see the value of this box and whisker plot in this one as well. So if we look at software adoption, here we've got a lot of variables, you see. Um, let's do software adoption. Clear this. Uh, in software adoption, we've got the count. I'll call the CNS for the count of the new software. That's a num. That's this guy right here. Okay, and in this case, we have a company that purchased a new software program, and they want to see whether or not people are using it. It sounds, stands to reason, makes a lot of sense. So what they did was they collected a lot of different variables. I wonder if it varies by department. I wonder if it varies by shift. I wonder if it varies by if they were trained in the old software. I wonder if it varies by their support by the level of support we provide them. I wonder if it's if it if it varies by the amount of paper that we use. We want to see if there's a correlation between those two. All right, anyway, so there's lots of different variables. Right? We're interested in for this case, let's see if it varies by shift. Which is a cat, right? You can see that that's a cat. It looks like evening and day. So let's take a look at that. Again, our PGA wheel, that's a num, one num, one cat, right? So our PGA wheel would say, hey, first look at the, here's, whoops, I've got to select the data, which I didn't do. Select the data. Notice I'm selecting all of it. I'm still going to do just one num, one cat. We'll go to count of new software, and now we'll look at it by shift. There it is. Okay, let's take a look. Here's our box plot. Let's click on that and see what we get. Here's a good case of something that doesn't look like the means are different. Do you see how the centers of these boxes are more or less the same? I know that line's a little bit lower than this line. Um, that's actually a median line. But uh, yeah, I know that line's a little bit lower than this line, but not a huge deal. Okay, I may not expect there to be a difference uh, in means statistically between these two. Even though if I go up to the data and description, they may not be exactly the same. Boy, they're pretty close. But um, that can often happen with data. You see data that, yeah, the means are different technically, but they're not very different. And if you think about it, the difference between these two is very small compared to, say, the standard deviation. So you need a lot of samples to really see that. That's my guess, anyway. So if I were doing my PGA wheel, I may not start, I may not even go to do the test. But let's go ahead and do the test anyway, just for, just for uh, completeness. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to look at the mean of the, my null hypothesis is going to be, I wonder if the mean of the day shift is equal to the mean of the evening shift uh, versus, I'll just call them D and E, versus the alternative, they're different. Now, I have no preference whether they're greater or less than, right? I have no preference. Notice I'm not saying hey, I looked at the data and one is greater, so I better test greater. It's important not to do that, not to have any sort of a priori looking at the data. You know, you want to make a, you want to formulate your test based on not what you see in the data, but what your hypothesis is going in. Okay, that's an E. So let's take a look at it. The p-value is, drum roll, please. 
I can't do that with my head or with my with my uh, with my mouth very well. Go to test in two categories, and there it is, 0.85. Okay. All right. So mu one and mu five. That's a not equal. 0.85 certainly greater than 0.05. And look at that confidence interval. So here's a good example of the confidence interval overlapping zero. Notice it goes from minus five to plus four. So it crosses over that zero point. All right, so let's go back to, to here. And I'm not going to write out a lot of these other ones, um, but, but let's just write in the p-value is equal to 0.85, which is greater than 0.05, so the null does not go in this case. Tactically, what we do is we say we're sticking with the null. Remember, innocent until proven guilty. We haven't really proven the null, but that's tactically what we're doing. We're going to say, okay, for, for purposes right now, it does not differ by shift, so we can't really say that this is true. Okay, that hypothesis is not really supported by the data. All right, and remember that also that the confidence interval went from what was it, minus 5 to plus 4. And somewhere in there is 0. So that means that 0 may be an estimate for the difference between these two, which basically says there's no difference. If 0 is a decent estimate for it, there's probably not a difference. Okay, so that's the shift. I just want to show you how quickly you can do some of this stuff once you get used to it. And then we'll show you how to do that in, in uh, I didn't show you how to do this in Minitab, so I'll show you how to do it in Minitab. Uh, what if we wanted to look at trained and old? Well, again, we could draw the box and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that right now, but again, that's one num, one cat. I believe I already have it open, but I'm going to select it anyway. Okay, count versus trained and old. Let's take a quick look. Here's the box, but wow, it looks like a difference. Let's see if it is. Yes, the p-value says that there is a difference. We can come over here and verify that with a confidence interval. Pretty slick, right? We can do that very, very quickly. We can look at lots of different things very, very quickly. All right, let me show you how to do that Nick, in the mini tab. I mean, so far, all the stuff that we're looking at, uh, mini tab is slower than Excel stats, but I think you'll see but there are some things where Minitab does very well, or that Minitab does very well. Let's do this, and let's do the trained and old, because, or let's do the, uh, the shift one first, see if we get that p-value of 0.85. So in this case, we're doing a two-sample t. My samples are in count new software, and my subscripts, Minitab calls categories subscripts, are stored in shift. Okay. Yes, I'll do a box plot because I like that. Here's where my options of the test difference are alternative, not equal. I'm going to leave those alone. Click OK. Yep, look at that. Doesn't look much different. We knew that was coming. And then here's my, there's my p-value. See that? 0 .8, 8, 0 0.857. There's my confidence interval. So many type gives the same answer that Excel stats do. Okay, and, and because we are here, let's also, if we do a control E and mini tab control E says do it again, do it again. Click on trained and old. Now we can test it for trained and old. And there we get that picture. And there's our p-value. So it definitely is significant. And you'll probably recognize that from the Excel stats. Okay, so that's how to do it in Minitab. Stat, basic statistics to sample T. All right. Now, one, um, one other thing, and this is a preview of what's coming. What happens if we have more than, than two categories? Like, for example, support had five categories. What do we do then? Well, the first thing is always to plot things. And here's why I want you to do the boxes. Look at this. This is a very complex picture. That's very hard to tell whether one group is different than another. If I look at separate frequency charts, that's better. But look, it puts them off the page. And I have to go back. And that kind of taxes my short-term memory um, for comparison. But box plots, 
do the trick very quickly, I can very quickly see, boy, this guy right here, this guy right here is hovering above the others, and it looks like these three are about at the same level, and it looks like this guy is a little bit lower. So I can tell that very, very quickly at a glance in the box plot, and then I can do the testing that I want to do. Okay? Just an idea. Or just to give you an idea about all of this stuff. So let's wrap up that example. So again, the t-test, great for making comparisons of means. We're going to use the one sample and the two sample. Now one thing I do want to point out is that a lot of people make a big, 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 big deal about having to have normality uh, in order to do a t-test. As we saw in the last lecture in the supplement, that the central limit theorem protects us a lot for that. In fact, t-tests are very robust to the partures in normality. Only if you have very skewed data should you worry about it. If you have symmetric data, no problem. Almost always uh, a good uh, test to be using if you care about means. If you have extremely uh, skewed data, then maybe you do a, me a median test. We'll do one of those at the end of the lecture. But I want I just want to not caution you, but throw caution to the wind, if you will. Um, be a little bit more cavalier in, in that. You know, assumptions, there are, you can easily get into the game of saying, you know, put all these qualifications on every bit of analysis that you do. So basically nothing is strictly speaking true. We all already know that the world is not simple mathematics and that we have to make models in order to uh, make conclusions. That's all these tests really are. They're just giving you a much more deeper look into whether or not what, what you see in a plot is real. And that's really what we have to keep in mind. T-tests are very robust. All right. Um, so that's that. Let's go ahead and what I want to do is I want to do the example that's now on, um, uh, that is now on 128, which is on gas mileages. Okay. So what we're going to do Oops, and I shut down Excel stats. I should not have done that. Let me open it back up. There you are. Okay, so we're going to do the example uh, of gas mileages. There we are, right there. And in this particular one, is that? There we go. All right, and in this particular example, what we've got is we've got a test track. On a test track, we took a specific car and uh, we had female and male drivers driving around on a test track and we wanted to see if there were differences in mileages. It was a test track that included stopping and starting and, and some other things. We wanted to see if the gas mileage, that the gas mileages that different drivers had, if that mattered, if gender mattered. In other words, if you were a man or a woman, right? So again, that's a num, and that's a cat. Okay, so again, first thing that we ought to do, PGA, is uh, make the make the box plot. So let's go ahead and do that. But I'm going to be very specific here. Let, let's let's do this one in Minitab. Not you'll see why in a moment. Here's one of these cases where Minitab actually certainly beats Excel stats. Get rid of that. Just a, a moment. Okay. So I've got mileage and gender. Let's make a box plot. We haven't done box plots in Minitab, so here we go. So we'll do graph, box plot, with groups. You'll see what the group is. Mileage versus the group, gender. And let's take a look. Okay, so the first test, remember uh, when I said something like, well, the, uh, I have this uh, um, test called the UFO test, um, and certainly there's a lot of hovering here. So UFO test says looks like means are different. But here also, when we do boxes, we're going to be looking at, every time we do boxes, we're going to be asking two questions. The first is, are the means different? The second is, are the standards deviations different? The way that you tell that one is not the UFO test, 
but what I call the birthday birthday present. Okay, and in the birthday present test, you look at the size of the boxes themselves. Okay, so the extent, I'll just actually sort of highlight this, this guy right here. Okay, versus this guy. Oh, right here, my, my penmanship could be better. That's for sure. <laughs> anyway, those two boxes right there. And I asked the question, is one of these birthday presents bigger than the other? Okay, now don't worry about the ribbons that are on the package, right? We don't care about that. We just care, care about the size of the box. All right, now there's a saying in the box that goes like this. It says, good things come in blank packages. That blank should be small, right? Good things come in small packages. In most process situations, you would like to have, it's a good property to have the consistency good. Okay, that means a, a, a small variation. So that relates to the package. And so you can think about that. If you have a big package um, that has lots of variations, could be anything. If you have a small package, it's probably like a, a DVD or who knows what, right? It's probably not a book, maybe. Not that those things are bad. Those things are good. All right. So this is, getting back to reality here, this is really going to test where the sigmas are different. Okay? And that's what we're interested in here. Now, we already know... We already know that to test the means, we can do a, a two-sample T. We can go ahead and do that. F3 is another one of those things that's helpful because it clears everything else. We want to know mileage by gender. And in fact, when we hit, when we hit that, there's our p-value. Yes, it's significantly different, and here's the gas mileage that it differs by. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to really test that second one, which was based on the sizes of those boxes, which is a test of variances. So let's go ahead and do that in Minitab. Now, it turns out, it turns out that, um, well, let's just, go, let's just go ahead and do it in Minitab, and I'll show you how to do it, and then we'll have a couple of comments. So that's in Stat, Basic Statistics, Test of Two Variances. That's pretty cool. It's right there. We have our samples, and then we have our subscripts. We're, see, it works just the same. Graphs, do we want any graphs? No, not this time. Already have them. And uh, here it is. It gives you, let's see, maybe I will do the graphs. Let's do the box plots. I like it because it puts it on. Oh, it didn't do that. It used to put it on there. Minitab got rid of some of its, uh, of some of its stuff. But in any event, here are the tests. And this is it, okay? So it gives a little bit of stuff here. It gives the gender and female, male ratio of standard deviations. Turns out that standard deviations is a ratio test, but we don't really need to know that. We just need to get that p-value. And there it is, but it gives us two, which perplexes us. So in this case, so first of all, let's, all, let's just be, be blunt here. The only time when it matters is when we get conflicting results from the p-values, right? One is less than 0.05, the other is greater than 0.05. In this case, they're both greater than, which seems to support the conclusion that there is no difference between the standard deviations. Now, it certainly looked like there was, but it turns out we don't have enough data. See, there's a good example of where our eye kind of deceives us. Our eye can kind of, deceives us, can kind of deceive us. If we uh, look at that box plot again, let me go back to the plots and see if I can pull up a box. There's our box plot. So that says whatever we saw um, here, like the difference in the size of the box, wasn't real. So when we ran our hypothesis test, sigma m is equal to sigma f versus the alternative sigma m is not equal to sigma f, we got a p-value greater than, greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, we fail to reject the null. And effectively, we say that the null is, we work as if the null is true, even though we haven't proven that to be the case. We act as if it's true. We don't have enough evidence to really support our theory that they're different. So we're going to keep going forward. So here, again, like I said, here's a good case where even though the boxes look like they are different in terms of how much variation they, they have, in terms of how big they are, 
there isn't enough data, at least, to support that conclusion that they really are different. So, uh, getting back to this example, it certainly does look like, in this case, female women get better gas mileage than men, but there isn't uh, enough to support that conclusion when we talk about are men more consistent than women in their, in their driving. Again, I want to emphasize this is a specific car on a specific track. All right, before I get myself into too much trouble. So that's how all that works. Now, why did I bother going into, uh, into Minitab? Well, the reason is, the reason is, see if I can get back to the session window. There we are. The reason is they gave us two tests, F-Test and Levine's. Why? It turns out that the F-Test, unlike, remember I told you that the T-Test is very, very, uh, uh, is very, um, robust when it comes to departures from normality, it turns out that the F test is not. So, if you want to do tests of variances, either if you're going to use the F test, which is usually the choice of the, the, the test of choice by most people, you have to have normality. Otherwise, in Minitab, you have the option of going to Levine's test. In, in Excel statistics, we don't even have that option. So. There's not even a way to show how to do that. Um, that's for a different lecture on a different day. Uh, but for now, uh, we can do the F test. Okay, so how do you test whether the data are normal? Well, again, you can look at, I like looking at plots. Um, let's take a look at a probability plot. Here we have, uh, we have multiple ones. We have mileage, and we want to look at it by gender and see if those uh, give us some normal data. And lo and behold, it looks like the, huh, it looks like the, uh, the women, right, female, the, the distribution for female drivers is normal. See, it's within these sort of confidence bounds. Normal is not a bad model to use there. But for men, sorry guys, it is not normal. See how that curve does not line up with that that uh, straight line, you can see it kind of goes way out. So I guess that just supports that we're not very normal drivers. All right, again, before I get myself into real trouble, let's move on on this one. So in this case, the Levine's test number would have been preferred, but both are uh, both would tell us the same thing anyway. All right, I'm not going to dwell too much on this other than to say in Excel stats, if we're doing mileage versus gender, the t-tests, no problem. Here's our summary again. There's our box plots. A little bit hard to read the box plots. We'll change the scale. 25. Good enough. Certainly looks like a difference. And same sort of difference in the size of the box. Let's see if that's real. t-test says, yes, the means are different just like we got before. Here's where you do the F test. Notice there's no Levine's test, so you're stuck. The only thing you can do is the F test, which we should check to see if the data are normal. Probably the best way is to simply look at the, uh, look at the separate frequency charts and, and see whether they look normal. And you can see that, yep, yeah, there's the distribution for the man. It certainly looks a little bit right skewed. Whereas the women, it doesn't look normal, but it looks symmetric, which is usually good enough for these things. So we probably wouldn't do an F test, but just, just, for, just for giggles, let's see what we get. And there, lo and behold, remember we got 0.221 for the p-value. Excel stats gives you the same answer. Okay, so if we wanted to test it, we would still reject, or we'd still say the null is, yeah, the standard deviations are the same. Okay, so that's that. So that's variances. And remember, I mean, variances, they're an important test, but uh, the test of variances is an important test, but not as important as the test of means. So uh, let's, let's move on. And what I'd like to do next is the test of proportions. And for this one, I'm going to use the example that we have on 134, which is CGI. 
So let me use CGI. Go to the CGI data. Okay, so in this case, let me draw the whole thing out. I know we're moving fast here, but you can use the, uh, the back button or the stop button or whatever you like. Okay, let's, let's, let's diagram this out. So this happens to be, for example, from the gas company, although you'll see it's analogous to a lot of different things. When the gas company comes to your house and reads the meter or needs to get in to fix a gas line or something like that, they send a technician over. And if you're not home, they can't get into the house. And so that's a problem for them and for you too. So they wanted to they wanted to measure something. They measure something called CGIs, which stands for can't get in. So that means sort of the, on any time that they send a driver out, they either get in or they don't. Now, if you look over here, that's what we have. We have a no or a yes. That's certainly a cat. Okay. And somebody had the hypothesis that oh well maybe one truck maybe one fleet manager varied from another fleet manager. So we've got two of them. That's also a cat. So we have two cat here. Okay. So in this case, what we're going to do is pre be prepare uh, be looking at the proportion of CGIs. That is the ratio of uh, no's to yeses on CGIs if they differ by manager. Another cat, right? Test of two proportion. <laughs> okay, so if, again, the first thing is the, the PGA. We'll just go ahead and do that plot right here, and you'll, I think you'll see it. Here we'll do a bar chart. And we'll see if we get a difference. Let's do this in Excel stats first, and we'll do it in mini tabs. Not one num one cat, this time it's two cat. And by the way, the extension of, of the t test to n categories is called ANOVA. The extension of the two proportion tests to multiple categories is called the chi square. So we'll explore both of those in a later lecture. But for now, let's walk before we run. Okay, so here I've got CGI by manager. Let's take a look at the picture. Uh, tables of data can tell us things, but boy, you really have to stare. Uh, here's a nice little picture. I find it nice anyway. And uh, sometimes uh, Excel Stats has this really nice feature of being able to swap the variables. Sometimes the other way of looking at it looks is more revealing. Let's go ahead and click on that. But certainly, it doesn't look like there's much difference in these proportions. In fact, yeah, there's maybe a little bit different, but not more much. So one of the questions I might ask is, is the proportion of CGIs, that would be a yes, does it differ by manager? So let's write out that it certainly looks like it differs a little bit, but maybe that's not significant, maybe it is. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can back that up one way or the other. Let's write out the hypothesis test. It looks, eh, maybe, I'm not convinced, maybe a difference between CGI. So I wonder if the proportion of CGI's differs by manager. So our null would be the proportion, I'll write it as pi, if pi of A is equal to pi B, right? Or the alternative is pi A is not equal to pi B. Notice how I don't have a preference for which manager, right? So that's how I'm writing it. Incidentally, just to be very, you know, sort of uh, uh, explicit about this, I write it as HA is not is equal to HB, but I could have easily have written my null hypothesis as uh, pi A minus pi B is equal to zero versus not equal. Right, alternative. Right, those are equivalent statements. And if I solve this equation, right, if I move the pi b on the other side, I get pi a minus pi b is equal to zero. So these are two equivalent statements. I just wanted to point that out just in case you were wondering, because it does look a little different. Okay, back to where we were, which was two cat. 
So let's go ahead and do that test and let's see what the p-value is. To do that in Excel stats, it's on the test R by 2. R by C will get us to a chi-squared test. All right, let's check it out. There's our p-value. Notice it says uh, two sample tests for differences between proportions. And there's our confidence interval. Notice a confidence interval overlaps zero. Already a tip-off that this is not significant. P of 0.35. Nope, it just is not significant. So we cannot reject. Cannot reject uh, the null. So effectively, we say we're going to go. We're going to go with innocent until proven guilty. Uh, we have to look elsewhere for improvements. We can't look at which managers' uh, differences or that the difference that we see in managers in that plot is not uh, statistically significant. Okay. All right. Let's look at a. Let's look at a different. Let's look at doing this in Minitab. Sorry, I spazzed out there for just a moment. Let's look at it in Minitab. Back to my. There's my project manager. There we go. Okay, I just want this guy. Okay, and I'll get rid of the mileage versus gender. I don't need that anymore. All right, so uh, that would be in stat, basic statistics, two proportions. And now I get a bunch of different uh, options. And some of these are helpful because um, well, I'll show you in just a moment. So in this case, we have samples and subscripts. And if we click OK, um, and we have the same options. Click OK. I think you'll see right away we get the same p-value. You see it's the same p-value that we had before. There's a same confidence interval that we got before. But I'm just going to summarize this uh, for just a moment. I've got uh, uh, 20 out of 97 and 15 out of 97, right? See that right there? So B has 15 out of 97 trot chances. A has 20 out of 97 chances. I'm going to show you how to do this in mini in in mini tab. Sometimes you'll just have that summary data. That happens a lot with categorical variables. Whereas I just have the summaries. I just want to put in the counts. If you do the two proportion test, I just want to show you how to do that. You can just type that right in. If we have um, 15, 20 CGIs in 97 trials versus 15 CGIs in 97 trials. I just can type that in if I don't have the data itself, the raw data, whereas I, I can't do that in Excel Stats, which is kind of a bummer. Excel Stats needs the raw data for this to work. And you'll notice that you get the same answer in Minitab when you type it in, as, as when you type in the summarizing uh, instead of simply, uh, instead of simply um, having the raw data. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. All right, let's do one more example because proportions are pretty important. Uh, for this example, we're going to use, um, I'm going to shut this down in Excel stats as well. Shut this down. Okay, we're going to use the example of tax abatement. And I want to show you that this is something that you can do um, um, that there's a couple of different ways to skin a cat on this one. So in this, <clears throat> now this is more example uh, than we just did, but in this example, we're interested in, uh, this was a, a, a marketing group that went and they, a, a city wanted to provide a tax break uh, wanted to allow a, a company to er erect a, a cell phone tower, and they were wondering if, um, uh, in order to do this, uh, uh, they would uh, they would give a tax abatement uh, for to the to the people who lived in here, and they wanted to see if uh, the responses that they got they they administered a survey, and that was one: Would you agree to the tax abatement? Uh, would you disagree with it, or are you neutral? 
So there were three answers. What they cared about was the agree, the percentage of agrees. We'll say percent agrees. Okay, now again, right now, well, I'm, I'm not going to say percent. That was wrong of me. It's just the whether you agree or not. Notice that's what the data are. That's a cat. Now, what we wanted to see was whether it varied by whether you were in the city or whether it was rural. So we'll just say uh, demographic. Demographic. And this is city versus rural versus country. City versus country. Right? That's also a cat. All right. Well, in Excel stats, I won't go through the whole thing here, but, but essentially what we're looking at is the null of, we're going to look at the null of whether my proportion uh, of agrees for the city is equal to the proportion for rural versus they're not equal, right? That's my alternative. By the way, this ought to be getting boring, just writing this, this uh, statistical test. It ought to be becoming second nature. It's always equal, not equal, equal, not equal. The hard thing to write is, you know, which symbol do I put in there? Proportions you write pi means you put mu. Standard deviations you put sigma. All right. Fairly straightforward. Let us, as the rabbit said, move on. All right. So let's go ahead and do this in Excel stats, and I think you'll see. There's my two cat. That it's this is we're sort of back to what they do well. All right. Uh, rural versus city. Let's swap the variables. Yeah, it looks like this is what we wanted. Boy, it sure looks like the proportions are different in the city versus the country. But again, what if we didn't have all that much data? How much data do we have? You know, we only ask 100 folks. Is that really enough? Let's see if it is. Let's see if it's statistically significant. Okay. So when I click on test R by 2, luckily... Excel stats has all the categories of our, of our response. So if we wanted to test whether, if we cared about agree versus disagree, I mean, if we cared about disagree versus by, by rural versus city, we could choose that. Or if we cared about the, the people that are neutral, if that's different, the proportion of neutrals in the rural versus city. Here we care about the agrees, so we're going to click on that. Look at that. No question about that. The p-value is low. So the null must go, um, and we reject the null in this case and conclude that it's different for the folks in the city versus the folks in the country. Okay? Now, if you wanted to do that in Minitab, so, so far, so good, right? Maybe not, but hopefully. <laughs> so we would uh, reject the null in favor of the alternative. Yes, there's a difference between city and country folks uh, when it comes to getting them to agree to this tax abatement. So it tells me maybe where I need to focus my efforts um, or my campaigns or change my messaging or whatever. Okay? I don't have to put guesswork into it. I know that it's true because I've checked to see whether it's statistically significant. Okay, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Now, what would happen if we wanted to do this in Minitab? Well, if we wanted to do it in Minitab, the problem is that the response isn't binary. It's not just yeses or noes. So I need to know sort of how many agrees and how many disagrees and all that, and out of how many. Yeah. So there's a number of different ways I can do this. I can tabulate it in Minitab. Um, uh, I, can, I can do that. But it does make it a little bit more difficult. Um, uh, to do. Um, let's just see if we can uh, do that in um, in uh, in here. If you if you are using Excel uh, and you have Excel stats, I'm going to use Excel stats to do this uh, because I think it's fairly straightforward. If we do two cat, uh, it does kind of give you the numbers right here. So it says that the uh, and I'm just going to write these down. It looks like agrees in rural were 17 out of 37. And in the city, it was 6 out of 46. 
Now you could have gotten this if you if you know how to use pivot tables. You can do that sort of thing as well, um, and that's instructive. In this case, there aren't that many data points, so you could actually count. You know, you could count the number of agrees. You could also, if you're, you know, just to be very very explicit here, we could also use an if then statements, and then we'll just call this agree question mark, and do an if then on that one equal if if this first column is equal to quote agree comma 1, comma 0. Put a 1 if it's agree, put a 0 otherwise, and you can see for the agrees it'll be a 1, for everything else it'll be a 0. See that? See that? Okay, and then we can count the agrees, and we want to do it by city and by rural. And that would be kind of painful and it'd take a while. Okay, or if we just did this, we could port it directly into Minitab and the whole thing would work. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Minitab and enter in those numbers that we got. Basic statistics, two proportions, clear out the data, and use summarized data. So remember, in rural, it was 37 trials, 17 said agree in the, in the city. It was 46 trials, 6 said agree. Let's see if that's the same or different. Bam, 0 .001, it's different. There's our, there's our confidence interval for the difference. A mini tab can do it. You just have to work a little bit beforehand to summarize it. Okay, much, this is much easier in Excel stats. All right, let's move on to the last one. Uh, so that was the two proportions test. And again, it, it can help you when you have categorical data. You're looking at uh, things for by. Uh, by uh, responses by another category. So, for example, you may want to see if you if people prefer Pepsi over Coke, and you may want to break that up by gender. You know, I wonder if it's different from males and females, or by blue color versus eye color. I don't know why, but it could be. Or by whether you liked old Coke versus whether you liked whether you didn't. Okay. Let's do this last example. So we've actually covered, um, actually covered a lot of the uh, of the things so far. We've actually covered, um, we've covered means, standard deviations, and proportions. And keep in mind that means and standard deviations kind of go together because here we have the one num one cat situation, and proportions it's two cat. All right, let's do the last one, which is medians. Again, I want to emphasize that this is rarer that you use this. It's only if you have typically discrete, uh, I'm sorry, very skewed distributions for both, uh, for both, uh, for all of your categories of your response. Okay, for this, we're going to be do the procurement example as given on slides one as starting on 139. So here we've got the time that it takes to procure an invoice. You know what? Let me draw this up again. I know you're getting bored of me drawing the box, but it really does help to kind of understand the context. You know, obviously in your project you won't have to do it all the time because you already understand the context, but I still uh, tend to do this. Procurement time. You would probably just call it cycle time if you were in your process, and that's a num. And in this case, I'm looking at department, and that is a cat. Looks like it's department A or B. Again, if we have three departments, then we're talking about ANOVA. That's a different lecture. All right, same sort of thing. Let's uh, one num, one cat this. See what we get. Okay. So here is our box plot, and blah. Well, it doesn't really tell us that much. Now here's a tip off. When you're looking at a box plot like this and you don't see anything on one side, that probably means it's very skewed data. And uh, just to give you an idea, if you look at this histogram, you bet it is. If you look at the separate frequency charts, same thing. You bet it's skewed data. I'm going to make these histograms instead of frequency charts. 
maybe you could change the number of classes. Go from 0 to 1,600. Yeah, this is skewed data, and it's pretty darn skewed. So there's a couple of different things. One of the things you could do is transform the data. You would probably want to do a log, excuse me, a log transformation on the data. We're going to cover that next week, um, uh, mostly in the context of regression. But here's a good case where taking a log transformation of the data may help you a little bit, give you a little more insight. Um, but without doing that, let's go ahead and use the test. Here's just a good test to say, well, you know, the data really are not normal. I don't feel totally comfortable using a t-test with that. I'm going to do a test on medians. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, if we look at here, here's the means. That's that would be the test on means. It looks like there's no real difference. If we go uh, over here and see that the means test, there's the two t, the two sample t. It's not showing us anything, but I wonder if the median test would be. Now in Excel stats, the Man Whitney test is the one that it does the test for differences between medians. Let's write this out so that we so that we see what the hypothesis test would look like. Again, this ought to be getting really boring at this point. My null would be, yeah, I wonder if mu a is equal to nu b versus my alternative nu a is you guessed it, not equal to nu b. All right, we're going to run our hypothesis test and see if they're the same versus they're different. And voila, p-value of 0.357, which I hope you know by now means that p is greater than 0.05, which means we do not reject that null. And we effectively say, hmm, can't tell the difference between departments if we're looking at procurement time. We've got to find other things that make a difference if we want to find something where we can make an improvement. Okay, we don't have any statistical evidence that they're really different in terms of the median. Now, we also did test that average now, didn't we, um, by looking at that t-test. That really is a test of the average, and t-tests are fairly robust. Again, if you really wanted to do it, you'd probably take a transformation of the data, but to me, this doesn't seem worth it at the moment. So let's just move on. Okay? Let me show you how to do that in Minitab. In Minitab, it's a slightly different task. We're going to be doing a Kruskal Wallace, like it is an outlined in the book, that, which is outlined in the book. Oh, yes, I do actually have to go into Minitab to do this. Now, here's the hardest part about doing this. It ten, it's not in, uh, it's not in um, stat basic statistics. <laughs> it's in stat non-parametrics. Now, why is it there? Well, it just happens to turn out that a lot of tests on things like the 50th percentile, the median, remember the median is the 50th percentile, or the 75th percentile, or tests on percentiles tend to be have to be done and when you want them to do on something, they involve something called order statistics and uh, ways to test those are what are called non-parametrics. The good thing about non-parametric statistics is, without getting into it, is very few assumptions. So for example, there's no assumption of normality at all in this uh, or any other distribution. There are some assumptions that are, again, very, very robust, like I have something that's okay to model as continuous, um, which we have pretty numeric data here. Um, some cases you need them to be symmetric, but for the most part, they're almost assumption-free. That's the good thing. The bad news is they're simply not very powerful, so it takes a lot of data to really see differences. And in fact, you will find that with the median tests, that often there will be pretty big differences and the test says, no, there's nothing significant here. You may need more data. In such cases, it may make sense to transform the data and do a, a t-test. OK, let's take a look at the Kruskal-Wallis. A lot of people like to use a moods median. I like Kruskal-Wallis. That's what I learned. Either one is fine. OK, so procurement time is our response. Our factor is department. Let it rip.
And there it is right there. There's our p-value, 0.358, which again leads us to the same place that we had before. That p is not low, so we do not reject the null. And uh, here is what we got right there. 358 looks kind of similar. <laughs> so mini tab Excel stats give the same answer. So if we go back to our thing, we we do not reject the null. And that's that. Okay. So we've gone through a number of examples. Let me summarize it. Uh, let me let me take a moment to summarize. We've covered means, and remember that uh, for means the symbol is mu. We'll be doing t tests. We did a one sample and we did a two sample t test. We did a bunch of those. That's the most important one. Get that one down. We also did tests of standard deviations, the f test and Levine's test. F test works for distributions that are normal. Uh, Levine's test works always or almost always, so it's much more robust. Okay? Remember, the t-test is very robust to departure from normality, but the f-test is not. That's the only thing that you have to worry a little bit when you're doing um, f-tests. It tends to be conservative anyway, so it'll fail to reject when you actually do have evidence um, to reject. So that's not as serious as convicting somebody you know, on the evidence that's not right. In other words, saying that there really is something when there, there, when there isn't. Uh, we covered the two proportions test. Remember that was the two, it was called two, pro te two proportions, and it was testing the pies. And finally, we tested medians. Not, in my opinion, one of the more important uh, tests, but we've done it, and now you know how to do it, which is good. Kreska Wallace and Minitab, Man Whitney in Excel stats. Okay, keep in mind that. Uh, uh, that um, that always uh, when we when we write our hypothesis test out that it's going to look that it's going to look like this we have a null where we look at equality let me write it this way versus they are not equal. Okay, that's the key concept, and we're simply saying is, what we're simply saying is, do we have enough evidence to reject the null? Our theories are usually here. This is usually our theory. I think that there's a difference. Let's make sure it's not just the sample. Do we, uh, if p is low, if p is less than 0.05, then we reject the null in favor of the alternative. Okay. Another piece of evidence is with the confidence interval, and these go hand on hand in hand. We'll look for is the difference is zero contained in that confidence interval from A to B, or is it not contained? Right? Is it somewhere, say, over here? Is zero somewhere over there? Which means that they have to have the same side. If you see the sign changing from A to B, negative to positive, that means there's no difference. If you don't see the sign changing, there is a difference. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and uh, I hope this helps a lot because we've covered a lot. We've covered a major point, a uh, major uh, section of hypothesis testing. Next lecture we'll cover ANOVA and extend some of those hypothesis tests that we do have. Thanks for listening.